Right, the old Corsa, will it run? Now, I thought I'd have a bit of a go with this one today. This is my old 1999 Corsa Sport. It's the 1400 16 valve engine. It is, well, it'll be 23 years old this year on this car. I have had it. This is probably the longest I've ever owned a car. Well, it, by some way as well. I've had this at least 10 years now. And, uh, yeah. You can see it's a, yeah, an old Corsa B. It will be, it's one of the later models. They stopped making these in sort of 2000. Um, I bought this in 2012, I think. Yeah, I'm going to say 2012. Um, and I, it was my everyday car slash project car for a number of years. Um, and it got to the point where it was increasingly needing more repairs. I know, Bella, we're outside, aren't we? And about five years ago, I packed it up on the drive after the MOT had run out. And I've done pretty much fuck all with it since it's sat here all that time. And sort of becoming an increasingly sorry state for itself you can see it's if we look down the side of the car here it's got moss growing on it some of the lac has come off on that wing which is unusual for these older painted cars um, normally they rust before the paint gives up um, yes the bonnet is a slightly different color green um, yeah when I first got it the original bonnet had loads of rust along the front here big sharp edge so I ordered another one off eBay. It was about the right colour. But yeah. It came to um, the end of its MOT, like I say, about well, probably four or five years ago. And I didn't actually put it in for its MOT, which I regret now. Because it may well have passed or not needed all that much work back then. I could have kept it going. But for various reasons. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mainly being, you know, I won't go into it. But yeah, for various reasons, it ended up parked up and it's been sat here ever since. I have had it running once or twice since then, but it hasn't moved from this driveway. It's been sawn ever since. What can you see, Bella? But I'm finally at a point in my life where I feel like I'm getting back on track. And I'm feeling more confident in myself, you know, being able to do things. Um, so, yeah, I mean... The Mazda at the back is still waiting parts, so I thought I'd have a go with the Corsa today. I'll have a look inside, I'll do this as an introduction. And then just before I even open the door, you can see the interior is in a bit of a sorry state. Oh, door doesn't want to open. Get me hat back. Yeah, so you can see the seat, clearly a bit of damp has got in here, that's not good. Door card, it's going to need some work, well, it's going to need a fucking good clean. Oh, my little tweeters falling out. These cars, I had two of these, I had a, a Corsa Merit, which was a more basic model, but they came with little grills on here. And you'd have tweeters sat behind them. Well, I naturally, being a young lad, upgraded the stereo system and put these new tweeters in. But I didn't drill this hole quite right, so that will never quite fit properly. The other side's not too bad. But maybe that's something we'll have to work on. But yeah, this was one of the higher spec models when it was new. Let's see if we can put the seat back a touch. There we go. We can get in. in it you would get oh. yeah so being the higher spec model it would come with aircon there you got this digital display up here which basically did uh, temperature date and um, uh, what else was it time obviously and um, then when you turned the stock radio on it would display the radio station up here Obviously, it doesn't do that anymore, so I've got uh, an aftermarket unit in, as you do. So, yeah, now it will just do, just display temperature, date and time. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's about all, all there is 
to it inside. The airbags were optional. Remember, this was the 90s. So, yeah. Uh, uh, battery's completely flat. But yeah, that's a bit cracked. That might have to be glued. As you can see, oh, I look in there. 134,000 miles, nearly 135. But yeah, the rev counter was optional as well. The model I had before this, the Corsa Merit, um, didn't have a rev counter, you just had one big speedo in the middle. So, yeah, and other optional extras were this dial here, which dims the instrument display. That was optional. Um, but yeah, she needs a bit of work in here. We'll go through the full details of it later. But yeah, I used to work on this car. I loved working on it. It's uh, they, they were great cars for modifying. Um, and yeah, it's a bit of a shame what I've done to this. So hopefully we can get her restored. Did I leave it in the glove box? <laughs> Old tax discs. Jesus. Kids of today won't know what they are. <laughs> so. The tax disc that's in the window says 2014 on it. That shows how long this car's been sat here. Um, but yeah, interestingly, the driver's seat is mouldy. But apart from the junk that I've left in this car, the passenger seat is okay. There's a hint of mould on this side. Yeah, inside it's not looking too bad. It needs a fucking good clean. I've got mould around this steering wheel. But it's not too bad, really, in here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, if I pump the clutch, that still feels as good as it always has, as I remember. The brakes are obviously rock hard. Uh, cable accelerator, none of this fly-by wire. What's in here? <laughs> this is my student idea of a um, <laughs> air freshener. <laughs> Get a bar of soap, stick it in the ashtray. So, uh, yes. <laughs> right colon tar soap. <laughs> I like the smell of that. I'm going to take that inside, use that in the bathroom, and we'll keep that. Um, so that's it, really. Um, yeah, this was um, a modified car. Uh, the theme of it was, although you can't tell so much now, so I've taken a lot of it off, was going to be a sort of zombie invasion slash rat rod slash end of the world mobile. Um, now, the car that I had before, I kept immaculate, as in it was showroom spec. Let's have a look on the back seat whilst we're here. Mm, so what's been going on in the back seat? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Although the upholstery back there looks to be in reasonably good nick as well. I think it's just this driver's seat that I'm sat on that's fucked. Right. Some classy fucking speaker wiring there, isn't there? That was tidied up. I don't remember how that got out like that, but never mind. So, yeah, I'm going to pull that bin bag out and a lot of junk down there as well. They're just seat covers, actually. They're not bin bags. Um. Yeah, the car I had before, it was, it, I kept immaculate, absolutely pristine condition. And I got this after, well, after I crashed my last Corsa. And, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, it wasn't exactly perfect. I thought I'd go a different route, so I went down this whole zombie invasion thing. This was, I started about, well, a few years before um, Mighty Car Mods did their Mod Max series which was obviously greatly superior to what i did and now everyone thinks that i copied them but i didn't i was doing it first you fuckers so anyway let's go have a look around the back this used to say allcorsa.co.uk but it's worn off all corsa was a an online forum for well for corsa enthusiasts a shadow of its former self now a lot of people have moved on so, this is the boot 
the spare wheel, because I put bigger wheels on it, bigger tyres, that it didn't actually fit in the spare wheel well, so I used to have it on a roof rack. The roof rack I took off about a year ago and sold, which I regret doing now, because I kind of want to put it back on, but never mind. Got my aftermarket Maplin parking sensor kit in there. As you can see, down the ground front. That was it, just went clunk, but never mind. Uh, so, yeah, I used to have a bit of wood across the top of this, I don't know what I've done with it now. Mm. But, yeah, split rear seat, that was an optional extra as well. So, let's come up to this side. Oh, so now this side is locked. Interesting. No remote central locking on these. <laughs> There's one open. Come on. There we go. Right. And you can see some more classy wiring there that I'm going to do a much better job of this time. This is a repair kit for the seatbelt buckle. The driver's seatbelt buckle doesn't hold. You can just pull it out by hand, which obviously means it's not then really functioning as a seatbelt. Um, so what I used to do was just plug into the passenger side, which isn't nearly as worn out. Um, but I did intend on using this kit to try and fix it so I'd have two working seatbelts and see like you're getting buckles and everything I know Bella I know but I never got around to it so that's something we'll have to do I'll jump down there these sills whilst mucky are in good condition though I was worried that they'd be like rust in here and such like. This is what stopped me working on this car, stopped me using it all those years ago, was the rust. You know, 90s cars, obviously you have to keep on top of the rust. If I can get underneath this, we might be able to see what I mean. Right, you're going to have to get out of the way though. You can see under there, around the sills. Oh, get off me face, Bella. <laughs> It's not good, but the rest of the underbody, Bella, go away. It doesn't look half bad. We're gonna have to get it up on some ramps or some axle stands and see what it looks like. The exhaust was brand new when it was parked up, so you can see that's all still nice and shiny. And yeah, corrosion is the enemy here, but hopefully we can get on top of it. That's my biggest fear restarting this project as well, is welding. I don't know how to weld, and it's an expensive thing to learn how to do. So, yeah. Yes, I know, Bella. But for today, what we're going to do is see if she'll roll. Naturally, the battery's completely flat. It's been stood for years. But... Next door, showing off his new Subaru very jealous yeah despite my solar panel battery maintainer which obviously hasn't fucking done anything the little LED on it is still blinking faintly but obviously it's not doing any work yeah now I I am 99% sure the battery on it is going to be fecked as in it will need a new one but if I can get enough charge in it just to try and crank the engine over We'll see if she'll run. I mean, we're talking about five-year-old petrol in this uh, and an engine that hasn't turned over. Christ knows what that's done to all the starter motor and everything, but, or even if the immobiliser will still be programmed. These did have an electronic immobiliser on them. If that's not programmed, we might be fucked because I don't have the equipment to do that. As far as I know, that's dealership only, so. And even they probably don't have the equipment anymore for it, so yeah, that might be an issue. But let's get the battery charger on it and see if we can get her going. Alright, let's get the bonnet up and see what we can see. 
so far, the interior is okay. I'm hoping I'm not opening this up to a complete fucking horror show. to be oil in there. Doesn't look to be too dark either. Hmm. Right. So let's get the old voltmeter out. The battery. Oh yes, yeah, a starting power of 520 amps. Essentially, when I had this a while back, uh, the battery failed. Well, it just came to the end of its life, as batteries do. I couldn't afford a brand new one. I found someone was selling one from a BMW X5 on eBay. And I got them to measure it, and I measured it up against my battery tray. It looked like it would fit. So that's what I did. <laughs> so, yeah. Two bolts, which may as well be zero. So, uh, never mind. So what we'll do is we'll get the battery charger on. I've got to go out and do some stuff. And then later we shall um, see if she'll crank. It might be a sort of 10, 12 hours worth of battery charging, might it, Bella? Yeah. So, yeah, that's all we want to do for now. Turn her over, let her run for 30 seconds, and then turn her back off. I think if we can do that, then we're on to a winner, aren't we, dog? Yeah? You don't give a fuck, do you? No, I didn't think you did. Get down. on that it was you couldn't get the battery out um, <laughs> you also couldn't get to your air filter very easily I was really expecting to find evidence of some sort of mouse or rat having chewed up my fucking wiring under fucking air filters and all sorts, but it have fared pretty well. Get on there, you tight. And I say, mechanically, I'm reasonably confident in this car. It's the rust that worries me. the charger to another charger is going to do so yeah give me spanners quickly and we'll undo this battery maintainer the rest of it can just fucking stay on there and we'll get it wired up let's do that
here's a top tip if you have one of these cassette reels extension cables every time you use it pull it all the way out the reason being is whenever you pass electricity through well any sort of circuit but you know wires it generates heat now most of the time you don't notice that heat because a, a well-designed appliance will have wire designed to handle the amount of current that you're going to be putting through it and then some you know like when you run uh, the hoover that might be using a lot of power but it will have a big thick wire designed to handle it but there will still be an amount of heat now, normally that heat is just dissipated into into the air into the atmosphere however when you reel it up and get all that wire together it, it, they can't dissipate the heat very well and it will get very very hot very quickly now i'm only running a battery charger so i probably could leave this spooled up and chances are nothing would happen but it's best practice just to unspool them all completely uh, because it doesn't take much. I mean, if you were, say, decorate and you had like a single halogen floodlight sat on one of these and you haven't unspooled it, you could well burn your whole fucking house down. I've seen it done before. So, yeah, best practice, always unspool them completely, even if it's way more than you need. You can always tuck the wire out of the way or just kick it to one side. But as long as it's unspooled, you'll be all right. In fact, I have another one of these upstairs and it has two different ratings amperage ratings one for spooled and one for unspooled and yeah it's like a quarter so but i still unspool it completely even if i'm running small things like i was testing a usb splitter the other day and i still unspooled it fully it's just the thing to do now i'll plug this end into the outside socket so if you're looking to buy a house and it has an outdoor socket fucking buy it no oh, godsend. That and outdoor taps. <laughs> so. Interesting.
Right. Now it's on. There's life in it. I can turn the ignition on. The horn then works. I'm not going to try cranking it just yet. But as soon as I connect to the battery charger. First I thought it was electrical possible, like we had a short circuit, but it sounds more like a speaker. Interesting. It seems to stop when you turn the ignition on, but then we'll start again a few seconds later. I wonder if that's the alarm. Yeah. All right, we're gonna let it charge for a bit. I'm going to see if I can turn off whatever's making that noise. Alright, the noise is coming from down there. Let's zoom us in. That little thing you see between there, some sort of speaker. You can only assume it's the power sounder for the alarm. And it's tr the alarm is trying to go off. Now, we're getting 11 volts across the battery, which may just be that the... You know, the battery charger hasn't caught up yet. I mean, the battery is pretty much dead flat, so that'll climb in time. Or maybe this thing is drawing power. It's not the horn, because the horn now works now that we're getting power through the system, albeit not very well. But, yeah. And it may sound like electrical buzzing, but if you listen carefully, it's definitely just speaker buzz. So, I think the alarm is trying to go off. I'm just going to go quickly dig out the manual. Yeah, I'm just going to go quickly dig out the manual, double check that it is what I think it is. And if it is, I'm just going to unplug it because I don't need the fucking alarm to work on this car. So, yeah, let's go do that. Right, so it's been a couple of hours on charge. I don't know if it's coming across, but the noise has stopped on its own, which is good. It seemed to, when it first started, it seemed to be able to stop it by turning the ignition on. Then that stopped working, and it seemed to be getting louder as we gained charge in the battery. Then it seemed to get quieter. Um, but yeah, I've sort of left it for a couple of hours, and it's now charging. And we are now showing 13 volts across the battery. Whilst it was making the noise, it seemed to be fluctuating between 10 and 11 volts, but it seems to have stopped now. Fuck knows why. It's nothing I did. I went and checked my list of fuses and it said, oh, the fuse for the system is in the junction box in the engine bay, which is that thing. Except when I pull the cover off, there's no fuses in there, only relays, and none of them are labelled. And it said the relay for the alarm system was in the box under the dashboard. And when I pull the cover off that, the, the relay that was supposed to be there isn't there. So quite clearly my wiring diagrams and list of fuses and relays is way out of date. So, yeah, there's that. But it's stopped on its own now, so I can only assume that being on such low power, because that solar panel is still putting out a bit of charge, but not very much, but it's clearly just been on such low power for such a long time that, yeah, it was trying to go off Maybe it started trying to go off f fucking months, even years ago. And then I've introduced a bit of power to it and it's got some life in it. But yeah, it's clearly sorted itself out now and decided it doesn't want to go off. Which is fine by me. And yeah, whatever the load was, it's clearly gone now and we're showing 13 volts across the battery. Which is good. I'm going to take the charger off in a minute and see what the voltage drops to. It's... Uh, yeah, you never know, we might get away with it, might not need a new battery. Stranger things have happened. So, yeah, I'm just going to quickly nip inside, and we're going to put the key in the ignition and see how things work inside. Let's give it a go. crank it with the battery charger on so it'll just blow the fuse on the battery charger um, but there is one positive 
The handbrake isn't on at the moment, but if I pull it up slightly, you can. Yep, yeah, we can get that light to work. And the engine management light on is on constant, which is good. If there was an immobiliser fault, which is what I was afraid of, that would be flashing. It flashes when it can't read the one in the key. I have a dummy key here, which I can demonstrate with. See? It flashes because there's no chip in this key. If I put the genuine key in, it's on constant because it's reading the immobiliser recognising it and allowing the engine to start. <coughs> Interestingly, <laughs> operating anything does cause the dashboard to do funny things. Also, the fuel tank is reading stone dead empty. Either it's leaked out, it's evaporated. I don't think it had very much in when I started. Um, either that or the gauges effect. But it's looking positive, the noise has stopped. I wonder if I can get the stereo to turn on. Let's turn this on again. Mm, doesn't seem to want to. Maybe there just isn't enough power in it yet. Seem to be mounted properly either. Alright. There we go. Who knows, maybe it'll come to life if and when we get this started. Gearbox still moves reasonably well. I don't know if you can see, there's a bit of a green theme going as well. This stitching, well, it's sort of faded now, but that used to be green. Stitching on the gear stick, that was green. I replaced all the little bulbs in this with green, although some of them seem to have stopped working. And that, that used to be orange as well, and I replaced that with green, as well as the interior light. Um, yeah. I was going for the sort of old... 90s ms dos style in here but yeah so we're going to whip the uh, charger off and just check the voltage on the battery and see what it's doing um may even give it a quick crank and see what it does let's give it a go so quickly whipped the battery charger off check the voltage on it and it had by the time i'd Unhooked the battery charger and turned my voltmeter on it, it dropped down to 10.8 and then within sort of 30 seconds it was it was falling pretty rapidly, it got down to about 10.6. So, I mean, when you take a battery off you do immediately lose some voltage and it will sort of settle at a certain amount, but it's clearly nowhere near enough to try and start the car yet, so we'll leave it another few hours and see where we are. As soon as I put the battery charger back on, it was straight back up to 13 plus, which is what we like. So we'll leave it a bit longer and see how it does. Right, so we may or may not be reaching a moment of truth here with this. It's been on charge pretty much all day. I can't remember what time I started with this. I think it was about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. It's now getting on for seven o'clock at night and we're starting to lose the light. As you can see, the sun is setting behind the house, so we've got this, yeah, this shadow is going to come slowly across and then it'll be dark. Um, so, yeah, the battery's been on charge pretty much all day. I haven't tried to crank it yet. I did think about trying to start it with the battery charger on there, but I've done that before with other cars and all it does is just blow the fuse on the battery charger. So that's just going to be a, an exercise in futility. Um, we're showing about 12.4 to 12.5 volts across the battery with the charger on there. If I take the charger off, we immediately drop to 11.3 and it sort of slowly declines. So that's not 
really going to be enough to crank it. I mean, if I knew everything else was okay, then I'd give it a go. But I don't think that you ideally need 12 plus to start an engine. And this one's been stood for a while. So, yeah, ideally I want to try this with a fully charged engine. We're going to leave it for about another hour or so. Even if we have to do it by torchlight. Yeah, that's still charging. The light's still on. Uh, I'm going to go out, get myself some fish and chips, um, eat them when I get back, and then we'll see how it is from there. If it isn't fully charged, I'm not going to try. I'm just going to disconnect the charger for the night, because I'm not a fan of leaving things on charge overnight. It's a bad idea. It tends to result in fires. So we'll take it off, and that will at least give us some indication of how healthy the battery actually is. If in the morning it's completely dead flat again, then we know it's a, the battery's fecked and I need to stop trying to charge it and get myself a new one, or at least a second-hand one. That's good. But for now, yeah, we'll give it a, another hour, maybe two, depending on how dark it gets, and then we'll see where we are with it. Right, so it's been actually closer to two hours now, about an hour and 45 minutes-ish, a bit more, a bit less. Not quite sure. Um, we're, I'm just going to... So I was just coming out to uh, pack things away. Like I said earlier, I don't like leaving battery chargers on things overnight. Um, it tends to result in fires. And, you know, as we saw earlier with the alarm going off, it's potentially questionable electrical system on this car. So I definitely don't want to be leaving something plugged into it all overnight because if something does go wrong i'll have absolutely no idea until it's too late so we're going to check the voltage and i think if it's over 12 volts after disconnecting the charger we'll go for a crank if it's under even by a little amount we'll leave it overnight and then that will give us an opportunity to see how much the voltage drops overnight like i said if it's stone dead flat in the morning then i'm not going to bother charging it anymore i'm just going to look to get a fresh battery for it if it holds its charge or it only drops by uh, a volt or two then we'll keep charging it and then see if we can get it started on this old battery so let's just check the voltage quickly so i'll try and do this so that you can see it So, with the charger on, 12.3. Now, I would hope that would be higher with an active battery charger on it. This battery is a bit too big for this charger, but still. Uh, yeah. So, let's just let's unplug that and take those off in there. point four see if i knew this was a good battery i'd probably give that a go it, it might just be enough to turn it over especially given that this battery is way too big for this car there's nothing wrong with that but yeah so what we'll do is we'll leave that overnight we shall check again in the morning see what sort of voltage we're on if that drops to, you know, like 10 or the high 9s, then I'll probably just keep charging it and try and get it up to where it needs to be. If it's dropped any lower than that, I think it's safe to say that the battery's fecked. So, yeah. So, as for the question of will it run, not yet, but possibly. Just quickly, as I'm packing up, let me quickly show you this. So... The little solar panel battery maintainer that I said was on the dashboard and didn't seem to be doing very much. Well, I just thought I'd check to see if that's still putting out any power. Now, it's pretty dark here, so I wasn't expecting it to work that well at all. If I look in the distance, the railway station at the end of the road has all its street lights on. It's, you know, it's getting pretty dark, but it seems to sort of pulse but it's still putting out 
eight to eight and a half volts in these pulses. Now, I don't know if it's pulsing because the light's failing or if it, that's what it's meant to do, that's normal for it. And you know, when you have good light on it, it would pulse 12, 13 volts. But I'm wondering if all this time that thing's been delivering charge to the battery, keeping it up as much as it can. But of course it was, it was never meant to run for, for years. And if the alarm system's been playing up in the meantime, that's been causing a drain. Which I think it might have been early, although that seems to have fixed itself now. Yeah. So we'll try the um, we'll try the little solar panel in the morning as well when we've got good light on it. But if that has been delivering power, that might bode well for the health of the battery as well. So yeah, always something positive. Right, let's see how we do in the morning. Right, it's now the following morning. Well, actually, it's closer to afternoon, but whoops, didn't mean to sleep so late. My alarm went off at eight as it always does. I decided I wanted a bit of a lie-in, given that it's my day off. And, um, yeah, I fucking wasted half of it. But let's see what voltage we get across the battery then. Do you know that I'm, That's quite positive. For a second now, I thought it was going to read it like 5 or 6, but 10.35... And it's holding it there as well. Look. This battery might yet still have life in it. That is amazing. It's been in this car for a good 10 years. I don't quite know how old it was when I got it. It was second hand. And it's not an expensive one. As you can see, it's a Halford's job. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get the battery charger on it. And, um... Yeah, I've got to go out and buy some car parts, but I reckon another day on charge, we might be able to give this a crank. Once again, fully unspooled your extension label, extension cable rather. That's now building up to yeah, about 12 and a half. All right, not bad. That'll probably start to climb anyway. Like I said yesterday, I think this battery is probably just a bit too much for this charger. It's only a small charger. It says on it up to 1200cc. I mean, 
clearly they guessed them in the size of battery that you would have for it, but they'll do the job. It's done it before. I'll tell you what I will do quickly. Just see what voltage I'm getting out of that. Um, out of the solar panel. It's now a bright sunny day. Let's see what we get. Got the terminals the wrong way around, but so 18 19 volts. See, that I would say was perhaps a little bit too high to be charging a battery. Interesting, at least I know the solar panel is still good. Mm. Mm. Alright. Off out to buy some car parts and we'll see what this is looking like when I get back. Right, okay. Once again, we're in a situation where we're losing the light. It's getting on for nine o'clock at night. Let's check this. Now, let's see, can you see that from there? Fucking thing. In there. tell you what it is so with the charger on we are getting 12.56 volts Charger off, we're getting 11.89. That's the same as what it was when I checked it three hours ago. I don't think the problem's the battery now, I think it's the battery charger. I think it's running out of puff. It's designed for. Evening. Evening. Designed for much smaller batteries, it says up to 1200 cc on the charger. This is a 1400 engine with a battery on it, designed for what two, 2.5, three liter. So, I think the reason we're only getting 12 and a half across the battery is that's about as much as it can put out. It's designed for something smaller, so it's just really struggling to bring it up the last volt or so. Been on charge for a good 10 hours today and like I said it hasn't changed the last three hours so I think I'm gonna give it a crank and see what happens I expect this to fail but I'm hoping it will succeed if it fails I shall give it one more day charging to try and bring it up to spec after that we're going for a new battery let's give it a try
That went as expected. Complete fucking failure. Actually, not a complete failure. It did turn just very slowly. And I was able to keep it turning at that speed for quite some time. So let's just check the battery voltage now. It's all gone down to 11.4. So it's holding on to that charge. More stuff inside the car is working now. The radio works. It all plays through the tweeters, which is interesting. But it is now working. So I'm not gonna do it tonight. Because I wanna go in and enjoy myself a beer. But that's promising. I think some more charging tomorrow. I might dig out my jump leads and get one of the other cars, if I can make them reach, to give it some more oomph. I think there's just not quite enough in the battery yet to turn over an engine that's been stood for so long. Yeah. I think the oomph of a live car and a good battery being used to jump start it might just be enough to get it spinning over. I mean, there's a lot that it's got to overcome. I mean, there's bound to be some things that have started to seize up, you know. So it's got more work to do than if this was a regular use car, but still. I also can't quite work out how I've managed to get bird poo on my strut brace when the bonnet's been down. How the fuck has that gone there? One more turn, just for the sake of it. It's no good. And it's starting to slow down now. One more check. New voltage. See, it's holding at 11.44. to a third day with the battery charger tomorrow. Feeling that it's jump starting a new battery time. Alright, so day three, third day of trying to get this battery charged. And I think we're gonna go for another crank. I'll show you what we're looking at on here. Let me position that there so you can see it. Now, if I check this now, we are showing 13 volts, 13.01, thereabouts, which is what I would expect from a battery that's on charge. And if we, say, take this off, um, something plastic, we show a good 12.4. I would have preferred to have 12.5. Doesn't look like we're going to get that today or right now, but that's a whole volt higher than when we tried it yesterday. So we're going to go for a crank and see what we can get out of it. One other thing that I did notice, I just checked this a minute ago, and as I took the clip off, the positive one, as I have been doing, I dropped it, dude, pure accident, and it touched this metal bracket here, and all fucking sparks everywhere which is A, a great way to give yourself brown trousers, and B, something of a good sign that we do have electricity. So, I'm just gonna unplug the charger. It is a windy and rainy day today as well. So, we've had 
tap the bonnet down, or at least partly down, on there. So if you're hearing wind noise now, I do apologise, but there's not a lot I can do about it. So let's go for a crank, hoping for something more positive this time. Let's see what happens. Nope, never mind. Let's check the battery again. Interestingly, it is turning over faster than it was. So that's positive. Let's see what we're on. Uh, you see, we've dropped back below the 12 volt mark. So it didn't work yesterday, it's not gonna work today. But that was turning over faster. So we're going to give it a few more hours to charge tonight and we'll take it off and we'll get it back on first thing in the morning. We are getting there. If we can get it turning over at a decent rate to the point where it's trying to start, then I'll be happy. You know, but yeah, I just want to know that it's going to spin over properly first. If it doesn't, it eventually this is going to be fully charged if it's still warm then we might have to start pulling bits off we'll get there eventually at least we know the battery is good Got a couple of hours daylight left tonight. It's started to rain again. Let's just check to see what we're on voltage wise with the charger back on. See so if it wasn't pissing down with rain, I'd start trying the jumper cables. Just get power from a live car, a live battery. Just got to bring it back up a whole vault again now. Fuck's sake. Lost basically all that progress. But with it pissing down with rain, I don't really want to. Also, electricity in the rain. Not the best idea. Especially since with the car being parked this way. I'd have to bring a live car up behind it, which I can't do because the Mazda's in the way, and I'd have to basically daisy chain the jump leads, which I also don't want to be doing in the rain. What I might do, because the Mazda isn't going anywhere for a while, if, we, if this still won't go after another day's worth of charging, I'll take the battery out of the Mazda and just hook it up onto this and see if that'll crank it any faster. That's a job for another day. Because 
I don't want to be working in the rain. All right. Right, so another day, another another charge. So it's been a work day for me today. So I uh, put this on charge in the morning. I work from home, so I haven't just left it all day. Um, but that was about oh, ten, between ten and eleven this morning. It's now nearly nine o'clock at night. So we're talking about ten, eleven hours worth of charging. I checked it quickly on my lunch break. We were showing about. 13 and a half volts with the charger on 12.6 with it off I'm just about to check it again now now 12.6 is about the normal state for a, for a good battery just your know, resting now i didn't have time to let it rest for very long but uh, that was quite positive so we'll just do a quick check again now 13.84 hopefully that's on the I'll do that again so that you can actually see it. Shall I? That'd be a good one to put that in there. Yeah, okay. There we go. 13.84 on holding. So we'll quickly take one of these off. Put that out of the way. Let's try that again. 12.8 and falling, but it will fall course it will fall when you first take it off it should come to rest about 12.6 once again it's getting late we're losing the light so before it drops too far both the sun and the battery let's give it a crack shall we let's quickly just unplug this take that off there move this out of the way now I think it's going to turn over slightly faster than last time, but not start. But I'll still take that as progress. Let's give it a go. Alright, so that might look like a bit of a failure, and I suppose to an extent it is. But I'm happy with the speed that's turning over at. I'm just going to check the voltage again, because that was quite a bit of cranking for what is now a 10, 15 year old battery. But you notice it was keeping the speed up. It's maybe a little sluggish. Okay, so we're at 12 volts, but it was still going. So I'm going to pop this back on charge, so I'm going to keep the battery charged as much as possible. But I'm just going to nip inside the car and I'll show you what we're going to do next with it. Because I think there's more to this than it just being dead flat. So yeah, let's just have a quick look. Right, so <sighs> fuel gauge is what I'm thinking. Everything comes on as normal. Obviously the handbrake isn't on. Uh, that works engine light the orange one that's normal because the engine isn't running fuel gauge though stone dead empty now 
I highly doubt... Well, there's no way I could have parked this stone dead empty. Because how did I drive it onto the driveway? Um, it may as well have been low on fuel, but it won't have been stone dead empty. So, one of several things has happened. Either it's evaporated, which is possible, I suppose. The seal on the fuel cap probably isn't all that good. I don't think it ever was. In which case, you know, over the years that it's sat here, little bits of vapour will have got out and anything that is left in the tank is probably just thick, horrible sludge that the engine can't run on. Um, or it's leaked out, which is worrying because that could be expensive to fix. If it's leaked out of the fuel tank, that's very worrying because... Yeah, they're expensive to replace, and I don't have the skills, experience, or tooling to fix this. Oh, well, to fix a fuel tank. I can't remember for the life of me if these are metal tanks or plastic tanks on these cars. I believe they are metal, um, which would explain how it's managed to leak. That being said, though, all the years I was in the trade, we dealt with some pretty old cars, and... We never once saw a leaking fuel tank. Fuel lines, yes. Fuel tank, no. And I've been watching a series recently with um, Ed China working on a 1980s Range Rover that sat in a field, not on a nice driveway, in a field for over a decade. And before that, it was being driven through Fords, you know, the whole off-roading experience. And the tank was rusty, but it was not leaking. So, whilst that would be worst case scenario, I don't think that's it. If it is a leak, I think it's going to come out of one of the uh, fuel lines. Um, which is less severe, cheaper and easier to fix. But, th they have then got to try and find the fucking leak. So, I really hope it's not a leak. I'm hoping it's the evaporation thing. But I think the next stage is we are going to have to... Um, Get a look in the tank, see what it's like, um, and the way we're going to do that is like this. So, the seat goes forward, and then this seat pulls up, and we'll have to pull this carpet out, but under there, yeah, see, it's all pinned in all the way along here. We'll have to pull all this carpet right out, which I'm not going to do right this second. But under under here, it's normally about there, is the fuel tank. Um, well, the fuel tank sender. Um, there'll be a plastic, almost like a little manhole under here, which will give us access to the fuel pump and the sender, and we can lift the whole lot out, have a look in the tank, see what it's like, and dip it if we need to, and see if there's anything in there. Maybe there might be fuel in the tank, um, and it's just that the sender's fucked. I mean, that's also a possibility. But that's a job for another day. If it turns out it has... If the tank is stone-cold empty, what I will do is get a jerry can, put, say, a litre in there, and then we can see if any leaks out. If none leaks out, we'll try starting it to get it pulling through the lines and we can check for leaks. I mean, yeah, it's not ideal checking for leaks with a flammable liquid, but what the fuck else are we going to do? It's a fuel tank. So I'll put that down for now. <sighs> Push this back. I mean, obviously, before I do that, hey, look, my green neon's still working the footwell. I forgot about those. Look at that, ain't that cool? This was a cool car once over. I mean, obviously, before I do that, I'll get it up on axle stands. And we'll see if there's any obvious ones. Like, if there's a whopping great fucking hole in the fuel tank, then I'm not going to start putting fuel in it, so it'll drop out of the bottom. But if a visual inspection reveals nothing, um, then we'll try and put some fresh fuel in it and see how we go from there. So, I mean, if we look at this, I mean, the needle is ever so slightly off the mark. So there may be some in there. Just not very much. I don't know if you can see that, but it moves ever so slightly when I turn the ignition on. So, yeah, there might well be some in there, yet. Yeah. But, yeah, the moment the axle stands are in use, 
on the Mazda, so we might have to park this for a while until I can get the Mazda fixed and get it down off the axle stands. Get this thing in the air and we can have a look underneath. Um, so yeah. But for now, we'll let the battery charge. I'm going to keep it charged up and we'll, um, yeah, we'll have to do something else in the meantime. So, so far, this project isn't off to the greatest start in the world. I was kind of hoping to have a bit more progress in charging the fucking battery. But still, can't complain too much. Tell you what, before I go inside and have dinner, I'll have a look underneath the car. So if we look under here, it's a bit dark. But the fuel tank is up there. See, it looks okay. Um, that's a brake line hanging down. So, let's come around this way. See, there's a bit of a rubber seal on there, but it's not a very good one. Let's have a sniff. Mm. Smells chemically. It's not a normal petrol smell. <sighs> right, well, it's not going to be today, and it probably won't be tomorrow because I'm working. Um, Wednesday, my other half is back from a two-month trip to Poland, so I won't be working on it Wednesday because we'll be shagging all day probably. So it's probably going to be towards the end of the week now. So, yeah. In a few seconds, the next bit of the video, I'm not going to do a part two on charging a fucking battery, but in a few seconds, the next bit will be putting fresh fuel in and or checking tanks and... Yeah, we'll be having a look at the fuel system before we go any further, but I'll keep the battery charged in the meantime. Right, well, I did a bit of a silly thing last night. Um, yeah, I mean, at the last section of video, I said, oh, you know, we'll leave it on for another couple of hours, go and have some grub. I sat down and watched telly, fell asleep on the sofa, and then woke up this morning and realised I'd left the battery charger on all night, which, yeah, I don't normally do, but never mind. I also went and left me fucking tripod out here as well. Been here all night. Uh, fortunately, I live in the arsehole of nowhere, so it's not the end of the world. So, yeah. It is, today, a fucking gorgeous day. It is, what time are we on? It's eight minutes past nine in the morning, and it is sweltering hot already. This will be a good day for working on cars. But... Capitalism kicked in and I have to work all fucking day. Never mind. But one good thing from leaving it on overnight, that is a fat pigeon. Look at that fucking pigeon. Oh, it's gone. I think we've made progress. If I show you on here, I don't know why the red one's blinking. Uh, but it's now showing green, fully charged. Hmm. So, yeah, let's check some voltages and we're going to go for a fully charged crank. I still don't think it's going to start. I still think we need to work on the fuel system, but we'll see how well it's turning over at least. Let's give that a go. the battery 14.45 which is actually a little high so uh, oops, unfortunately it didn't rain last night let's take this off let's try again Drop 
dropping slightly as it settles. Well, it's good and bad. Good, because I'd say that's a good crank over. Maybe a little sluggish, but I'd say that's cranking at good speed. And bad because it didn't start. <sighs> Battery's about down to 12.2. See, I think it just needs a live fucking alternator or a new battery. cranking well so we're going to leave this for now I'm not going to bother putting the battery charger back on for now actually no we'll put it back on for now um, but yeah when we next get a chance which is probably going to be at the weekend it's Tuesday at the moment we'll start attacking that fuel system Alright, it's been a while. Let's carry on with the Corsa for a bit, shall we? Okay, right, let's go back into the Corsa. Now, unfortunately, since the last video, although that was only uploaded a short time ago, quite a bit of time has passed in the real world. Um, I, unfortunately, just haven't had the time to, to be working on the Corsa. And on occasions when I have had the time, I've either had something else to do, I just haven't had the energy. So it's sort of sat for, well, it's been more than a few weeks, more like a couple of months. Uh, and we're no further forward. Um, unfortunately, I let the battery go flat, so that's going to need charging. Um, I've only got one battery charger. It's charging the Mini at the moment. But that's kind of good because, well, we need to take the fuel system apart today. So we're going to start. What we want to do, we need to remove... Oh, this fucking carpet out of the way. We need to remove that, I don't know what it is, hatch, cover. Underneath there is the fuel pump, and it will then allow us to see down into, into the fuel tank. I only want to have a quick look and see what's in there. I suspect it's going to be nothing. Um, but, yeah, just see if there's any fuel in there. If not, then we can look to top it up after we've checked for leaks. So I need to find some way of getting a camera angle in here because, well, I can't come at it from the front seats because the back seat won't be in the way. And it's kind of difficult to come at it from the back because the back seat is in the way. So, hmm, I think I'm going to have to climb in the boot and sort of straddle this seat and somehow get the camera working from that angle. I could probably do it. Let's go get me a big tripod. All right, let's give it a go. Right, let's see what we can see. You can't come in the car with me, Bella. No. But we will bring you a thing closer. Yeah,
Junge. There we go. If the camera wobbles, I apologise. It's there's two legs of the tripod on the ground, and one of them in the boot of the car with me. disconnected the battery although it's gone completely flat again there's still a little bit of a charge left in it and we're potentially dealing with fuel vapor here anyone well anyone who exists in the world will know fuel vapor all you need is one spark even a small one I've got down planes before say you want to worry about your heat bills for the rest of your life. There's no purchase. There seem to be any way to get under it. I think I'm approaching this all wrong. I think I need to go and consult the manual. I bought one for this car, so I may as well use it. I understand you can't see what I'm doing there, but I can't really get the camera in any further. Right there, with them being in the way. Turns out there was nothing wrong with what I was doing, I just wasn't prizing the cover off hard enough.
Saw a small crowbar was in the tool. Alan, what are you doing? I saw a small crowbar was in the crack tool. Well, to be fair, this thing hasn't been off in over 20 years, but still. There we go. It's funny, the manual says gently. There was nothing gentle about that. Fucking hell. You know, some days I wish I'd gone and become a, a qualified vehicle mechanic. Then other days I'm glad I didn't. Today is one of those days. There we go, that is what we were trying to get to. That's the top of our fuel tank. There is already a smell of fuel as soon as I've removed that cap. Now that could be normal, or it could be a bad sign. It's hard to tell. But yeah, we need to get that open somehow. You remove that and... Um, yeah, the whole pump and the sender and the, your gauge will come out and then you can have a look at what's inside. So, yeah, let's see how we can attack that. How's that for a camera angle? In the car with me. probably still can't see but I don't know. Not a lot I can do about that. does one undo this besides with great difficulty it looks like it should rotate but as well now it's 
It's never that simple. Let's check the manual again. No, once again, we're doing it right. We're just not using enough force. just noticed under this seat there's various bits of dust and rubbish. I just sort of stuck to here. Uh, there doesn't look to be anything in it, but um, yeah, it's not what you want to be finding in your car. is just tapping it sort of sits in a ring I'm trying to rotate it I'm just gonna try and tap it along because I don't actually want to remove everything so I'm not too fussed about removing like the uh, fuel lines I just want to sort of lift it up and look inside so if we can just get it to come away slightly I can lift it up and see what's in there because the two fuel lines have these weird clamps on them that look to be single use only, which is typical. Do you know, if it doesn't come open soon, I'm thinking we'll do the inspection that we planned underneath, check for any obvious signs of leaks. And I just put some fucking fuel in it and try it. I get the feeling I'm wasting more time here than I'm actually going to save. Yeah, we'll try for another few minutes, but if this won't come off, yeah, we'll get it jacked up. We'll get underneath and start poking around. Feeling that, I'm going to recharge the battery and put some fuel in the fucker. See what happens.
yeah, I'm going to do that bollocks to it because this thing isn't budging. Let's plug it back in or it'll never work. We know how to get into this if we need to in the future. Right now. It was a slight waste of time. Right, let's get this thing jacked up, shall we? taking the back end up and the handbrake is on the back wheels we shall put it in gear and chock the front wheels just so it doesn't move not to use that. member behind it. Weighs about a ton, I think it's 1,045 kilos. Now for comparison, the Mini, although it's roughly the same size, weighs 1,250 or 1,290. Not sure, I'm sure the correct figures are floating across the screen right now. Um, the MX-5 weighs about the same. The Peugeot, which is a big old diesel estate, I don't know how much that weighs, I'm gonna guess at about two ton or more. And the Dodge, well, that's a 2.3 litre fucking American cruising car, so that probably weighs 
about a thousand tons. Jacking the um, the dodge up early, I was forcing it. Probably should check the weight of the dodge because um, yeah, that took a lot of effort to push it up with this thing. It may have been slightly overweight, so it's just less than ideal. Right, that's as high as it's going to go. Using the old ones this time. They're perfectly good, they're just a bit old and rusty. But that's fine. It's like to say this car doesn't weigh anything. I'll stand where I want it to be. Right, down and up again. If any of you out there haven't seen my video titled Why You Should Always Act Use Axle Stands, here's another demonstration. There's the dog. Hello. Oh, there you are. Good girl. Undoing the jack and undoing it slowly. Imagine having your fucking skull under that. Just see this like that. Up again. Can be. She's on. Okay, let's do the other side. Do it right this time.
was that. My other axle stands, I have two sets. Take this up, shall we? Always considering the handbrakes off. nicely. We check the other side. Oh. Yeah, well, there is the underside of the old motor. Now, I think this, that is metal. That answers my question. I was wondering if these were metal or plastic. Oh, be careful, Bella. Yeah, that definitely sounds metal. It also sounds very empty. Now, whilst I was under here, Checking the axle stands, I did get a very faint whiff of that manky old fuel smell. That being said, I may just be imagining it. Um, yeah, I may have just been imagining it, or may have just got a whiff from the top again. Oh no, the tank looks to be okay. Even metal fuel tanks, really old ones, they generally don't leak. They might rust, but they very rarely leak. That's just the band holding it up. But, I mean... Mm. I'm gonna check the other side. But it looks okay. The fuel lines run elsewhere. The fuel lines are on the other side as well. But so far it looks okay. 
Let's go, let's go around and check the other side of it, shall we? Uh, now, this side is still the same tank. If we can angle the camera up right, you can see it just sort of goes in when the exhaust passes, not through it, but passes by it, you could say. But it is the same tank. Sounds just as empty. Mm. Still just smells of old car. Yeah. These are my fuel lines. Under here. There. I'm not sure what they are. There's some sort of rubber or plastic. They're not leaking. They're actually in pretty good nick. <laughs> hey look. Exhaust still has its fucking label on. Told you the exhaust was new when it went on. And you know the rest of the underside of this car don't look too bad either. I mean, the main concern is that. That's going to need welding. But the rest of it don't look too bad, actually. Under here. All right. This is my filter. That seems okay. I think the fuel that I had, and there's very little of it, I think it's just evaporated. That sounds empty. See, that's the chassis. It's a very different noise. That just sounds empty to me. I think we go up the petrol station and let's put, let's get five litres of decent fuel to go in this, shall we? Yeah. Get, yeah, we'll do that, and we'll let the battery charge whilst it's disconnected. And uh, fuck it, let's just try and start it, shall we? What's that? Oh, oh it's just a rubber grommet. I thought it was rust. Well, it might be rust still, but never mind. Hmm. Alright, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Yeah, let's go get some fuel in this fucking thing. Let's just, let's just try it, shall we? I think it's safe to say that I am definitely going to have to learn how to weld. Fucking look at that. That used to be one of the front jacking points. That's not good. The other side is not as bad, but similar. That being said, behind it is just more of this, which is pretty okay. So I don't know. I might have to see if I can get, uh, say, an MOT tester's opinion on that. Whether it needs to be replaced or if I can just, say, just cut it out. <laughs> yeah. I always knew that would be a possibility. Although now that the car's up in the air, it doesn't look too bad under here. And this is actually not, it's actually all right. Yeah. That bit's worrying. That bit, uh, uh, well, I was about to say, that looks like a patch has already been welded in, but why would you then put a screw through it? But yeah, I wonder here, it doesn't look too bad. There's a few spots here and there, but that's the main concern. Hmm. Also, this hole. It's a bit too round to be a rust hole. <laughs> Never noticed that before. Oh, anyway, I'll stop lying down in the dirt. I've got work to do. Right, it's been a while since the last video. Just quickly show you this. Now this car has had about two days on a new, more powerful battery charger, which I'm filming a review of at the moment as well. But after that, it is now holding at a steady 12.7 volts. It seems to be staying there as well, it's not dropping off. So we've got about a gallon of fuel to see in here, about four or five minutes. I'm just gonna quickly reconnect this battery positive terminal, put the fuel in, and we're gonna give it a try. You never know, it might just work.
is also a good sign. Connected. Okay, I suppose there's bits of the car that are going to be joined now and now. Still. Let's go ahead and put the fuel in. Hear it underneath sloshing down into an empty tank. So we'll have a quick check underneath, make sure there's no obvious leaks before we carry on. Okay, well. I don't see anything coming from the tank itself. Fuel lines look okay. Mm, all right, let's keep going. One thing I have noticed, the fucking axle stands have sunk into my drive. It's a tarmac drive and tarmac is, well, it's technically slightly flexible. It's not a rock hard substance. Interesting. How about I'll have marks? Look at that one back there. <laughs> I'm going to have marks in my drive when I take this out back off the axle stands. Yeah. I'm going to put the rest of this in because if there is any remaining crud in the bottom of the tank, I want to try and dilute it as much as possible. I've got another one. I could put another gallon in, but just one for now. If everything's okay with it, it should start on this. If it just isn't running very well, then we can start to look at putting more fresh fuel in it.
turning over as fast as I would hope. Right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull the engine cover off, try and get at least one of the spark plugs out and see if there's any evidence of fuel in there and see if we can test for a spark as well. It's turning over, but it's not turning over as fast as it really should for when you're trying to start an engine. I'm still thinking battery, but we'll do a few other checks before we commit to it. Hmm.
bird just flew into the side of the car. Fucking animals. Well, besides a rather scary looking spider, it looks okay in here. This has been on. I've been on for a little bit. I've still got oil in it. Good. Come on, one vehicle. Oh. Shows how long since I removed these. Fuckers don't want to come off. Gonna be people screaming at the moment at me using WD-40. I need it to. Yeah, I need some something to penetrate into this and get these fuckers off at least one of them. Ooh, this one, there's a little gap in the rubber. So I'm gonna have a look. Besides. Once I get it off, this will just dry out and evaporate eventually. So that's not how I'm going to leave it in there. Ah, there we go. 
that looks looking okay now. I wasn't planning on spending so long on this. I haven't got any tools with me to look down into it. Hmm. size the spark plugs are, what size socket. I'm going to start with that size. For the life of me, remember where my spark plug socket removal tool is. Wait, I know. spark plug appears to be finger tight only. Let's see if we can screw it back in.
That one's only finger tight. Let's double check it's tight. Yeah, definitely tight that one. I'm going to try it again with those three spark plugs tightened. Just thinking about it, as it was turning over, it sort of did one slow stroke and then it do three just a little bit faster and it keep doing that. I'm wondering if we didn't have comp full compression on three cylinders because the spark plugs weren't in right. Surprise me. Check the new battery voltage again and we'll give it another try. If it doesn't work this time, I think I need to load up the parts cannon and just put a battery on it. Oh, come back up 12.4. 
Okay, let's see what we get. Now that's interesting because that sounds a little better. It's still doing that thing of sort of 
being slow and then doing the other three quickly. But that does seem to be spinning faster. Hmm. One thing I have just noticed, this new battery charger that I'm testing out has fully charged the Mini's battery, it's reporting. So what I might do is get the jump leads out, give this a big boost and see if it'll go. Right, welcome back. I've got no idea how long it was since I last touched the car. For some reason, every time I want to work on it, something comes up. I'm either fucking exhausted from the working week, or there's something else or someone else who wants to take up all of my time. We've gone out and got ourselves a battery for it, as you can see. Uh, now, it's reaching a point where I'm going to need to start putting parts on this. No matter how much I try with the old battery or fart around trying to get the start as it is, it won't work. So... Yeah, we've gone out and got this one. It is second-hand, but as you can see by the condition of it, it's as new. It's three-month-old. Someone bought it for their car, thinking that would fix it, and it didn't. So they scrapped the car, kept the battery, and then sold it to me. Now, it's a fair bit smaller than the one that's on there, but it's actually more than the car needs anyway. The specification is for 40 amp hours, and we've got 50. Now... I've actually bought it to go on the Mini, which definitely does need a new battery, but before we fit it into either car, we can use it. This is a good battery, and we can use it in either one. They're both project cars, so they don't need a battery each right now, at least until they become daily use cars again. So I'm just making myself a quick coffee, and then we're going to go outside and see if we can't get it running. All right, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to use jump leads just because I don't want to go through the rigmarole of putting the battery on just to then take it back off again later apparently because I have to remove this strut brace apparently because I haven't quite decided which car it's going to go in yet the good battery is probably going to go in the mini so I'm going to start setting this up that can go on that clamp on there This is a great start. Uh, that's the left bit there. Hold on. No. Well, this is going well so far, isn't it? hear noises. Right, let's go for a crank shall we? Where have I put the fucking keys? What is it about? So what, let's check some voltages first as well shall we? So with this attached we are now showing 12.53, good, and down here, exactly the same, which is exactly what you would expect. Alright, good healthy battery, let's see how she does.
exactly the same as before. That's disappointing. Let's do a quick voltage check. off yeah I'm going to theorize <laughs> based on very little evidence at all that battery is losing charge quickly and all that's happening by having the two of them on is this battery is having to top it up and none of the benefit is getting through to that engine so we'll whip that off and we'll start it on the good battery alone see how well she does if i had to bet i'm going to say exactly the same as before and we're going to be quite disappointed um but i hope it spins over a fair bit faster so let's get it off So it's lost 0.02 of a volt from that. And that battery is dragging it down. Let's get it off. What is it, Bella? Why are you whining? Eh? You're outside. You love being outside. Come here. What are we whining about? Hmm? Come on, sit. Stay there. Good girl. about losing your nuts and bolts when you're doing something like this. Something like this. Just whiz it back on by hand. That's not gonna go anywhere now.
Come on. Let's try an extension. What are you doing, Bella? What's all this noise? Spanner set for this. Not spanner set, socket set. Signs up. Done the bolt entirely. Bella. Bella.
Bella, here. Bella. Here. Come on. Good girl. Sit. Yeah, I know. battery out now it is rusty as fuck but it's still solid i don't think that's acid corrosion i think that's just had moisture under it i mean there's no evidence of leaks on the battery i saw look under there no there's rust on it but again that's just from the thing if we shake it there's, uh, you can still hear stuff in it, so it hasn't leaked. Right, let's get the new one on. What are we doing, Bella? What are we doing? Yeah, yeah let's get the new one on, shall we? is getting in the way so it won't be secure for now it's all right the car's not going anywhere for a while so not that bothered right this second
0.57. All right, let's give it another crank. Well, positive, but also not positive. That's a good healthy turnover, good healthy crank. But, no go. You need the things that make it go. Now, interestingly, I don't know if it will come across on the camera, on the audio, but if I pumped the accelerator, the engine note did change ever so slightly. Well, what kind of the engine note? Could have been exhaust note. It's hard to tell. Now, whether or not I was just moving something because it's a cable accelerator and that made it slightly different, or whether or not there was actually fuel attempting to be burned inside the engine, I don't know. There is, at most, five litres of fuel in there. I'm gonna go get my other jerry can, which has I think, a few more liters, maximum of five, and pour that in because the fuel is barely registering on the gauge. Put a bit more in. If there is any like sludge in there, it will help dilute it down. Might help us to get it started. Beyond that, we'll have to start ramping it up, go for some more extreme measures. So for now, I'm gonna go at this fuel bella, hmm? Shall we? Come on then. Let's go get this go get this petrol, shall we? Right. It smells like petrol as well. Thank you. 
Come on, fuel gauge. How can it have gone down? Oh, there we go, it's coming up slowly. It's maybe just a bit sticky. There we go, let's register it slightly better. Let's give it another go. That's a bit concerning. That may be a bit of a fuel leak. Interestingly though, if we look, it is forward of the tank. Get off, Bella. Stop licking me face, animal. So she licks the camera instead. Yeah. Uh, well, it's coming across, but it is it's behind the tank. Hopefully it's just coming out of the filler neck. What I'm gonna do is try and put the camera under here and give this a crank and we'll see if any droplets come down. But hopefully that's just what's come out as I've been pouring it in. But that's something we shall have to fix. Bollocks. Uh, we'll do sims before and we're watching for drips. that back a few times on my phone and I didn't see anything um, I'll watch it again on the laptop uh, in a bit later and we'll see but I'll follow it from here oh, I apologize for the angle I'm laid out on my back that's where it is well, if you follow it up it goes up into here if I feel around in here there's a dampness right there of this is nice and dry and there's a, a dampness right there you feel it it smells of petrol that is the fuel filler neck it looks like it's leaking around that clamp there 
That feels like a joint. Yeah, that's rubber. That's more solid, that's plastic. All right, so it looks like we've got a leaking rubber hose. Not the end of the world, fixable. And because it is the filler neck and not the tank, which still doesn't sound like it has any fuel on it, but never mind. We know it's not gonna come out. And that's not everything I've poured in. I poured 10 litres in, it's only made this little puddle. If you look, it's about the size of my hand. Oh, don't lick me in the ear, dog. All right, so that's something we need to bear in mind. Add it to the list. Let's go back to trying to get it started. Okay, process of elimination time. So, to make an engine run, you need fuel, air, and ignition. Well, that's that, Actually, that's just what you need for any sort of fire. But we're dealing with engines, so that's, yeah. Um, so, it's turning over well. We've got a good battery on it. So we're going to start. Uh, we're going to start at the air side. Uh, we'll pull the air box off. Check the air filter. I think I did that when I first started this, but it was fucking ages ago now. So whatever. Um, we'll pull it, pull it off, and then we're going to do something really quite controversial. We're going to put a little bit of brake cleaner into this pipe here, and then crank it. And there will, there will be people on the internet say, "You will blow up your whole house." Well, no, I won't. Uh, we'll just put a tiny amount in, it's something for it to burn, and we'll give it a crank. It may start and then just die shortly afterwards, um, or it may do absolutely nothing, but at least with all that disconnected and cleaned out, we'll know that it's getting air in it, and then after that we know it's one of the other two things, fuel or ignition. So yeah, something flammable in there. If it starts, even if it, or even it just makes noises like it's trying to start, then we know we're getting spark, because it will be trying to burn it, and then we go to fuel. If it does nothing, then, yeah, we probably need to look at fuel and spark. It doesn't really gain us anything. But we'll then start with spark, because that's, like, the second easiest to do. We're starting with the easiest, and then we'll go to the second easiest, and then we'll go to the hardest. I'm pointing over there. I don't know if that is a fuel pipe or not, but whatever. We'll find out in a minute. So, yeah, we'll get that off, and then we'll do something controversial. Warning. Flammable. Excellent. Air filter, I mean, it's not new, but it's in worse. I think this was actually quite new when this car was parked. Okay. It's making no difference whatsoever. This fucking brake cleaner doesn't want to work either. That is the story of my life, look. <sighs> Fuck's sake.
What else do we have that's flammable, dog? Hmm? I know, Bell, it's disappointing, isn't it? I wondered if with the air box on, let some vapors gather in that pipe. No. Okay, so next stage is spark. Uh, so I want to get those leads out. Um, I can't remember the design of them. I don't know what the design is relevant. I need the plugs out as well. And. I have no idea where my spark plug socket is, so I think I'm going to have to buy a new one, which is yet more fucking money. Also, it's it's now late September, it's nearly six o'clock and it's starting to get dark. And Bella's whining because she wants some food. Look at her. There's not over there, Bella. Come on. Yeah, I've left this too late in the day. What I should have done is started first thing this morning. Well, or well, much earlier than I have done anyway. Working tomorrow. It's going to be like another week before I can get back on this. Still gives me time to wander a um, spark plug socket. Yeah, well, I thought, you know, being prudent, I might just go and uh, check the, the manual on it. I do have a Haynes manual for it. Some people go mad about them. I swear by them. If you disagree, fuck off. Uh, so, yeah, here we go. Now, there's a bit at the start on um, changing the spark plugs. I don't really want to change them. I want to test them. So, come here to ignition system testing. 
two out of five spanners. I've yet to actually find anything in this book that is five spanners, even taking the entire engine and gearbox out only seems to be four, so whatever. And I'm thinking, all oh, right, so this is going to be a nice way to test it, because I was planning on just pulling one out and seeing if it sparks. You know, turn it over with the spark plug out and just seeing if it goes off. Apparently you shouldn't do that. So it's given it two spanners, but then it gives you all of this and then all of that. Basically saying, don't test it, get a Vauxhall dealership to do it. I mean, it starts off, I mean, all right, fair enough, there's a warning. The HT voltage generated by an electronic ignition system is extremely high and in certain circumstances could prove fatal. Yep, yeah, we know that. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Take care to avoid electric shocks from HT side of the ignition system. You know, blah, blah, blah. Don't cock around with it. Don't put the spark plugs up your anus. All that sort of thing. You know, if you have a... Definitely don't do that if you have a cardiac pacemaker. But anyway, I wasn't aware there was any other type of pacemaker. Is it like one for your leg or something? Or... Ah, well, fuck it. Don't care about that. And, so, and then it just goes on. Oh, no. There's a disc system, which this car doesn't have. Yeah, they're normally very reliable. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. I'll show you why I'm laughing. This is the disc module. The car doesn't have them. It has HT leads. Only the very latest of the Corsa B had these. Otherwise known as a coil pack. Ask any Vauxhall technician how many coil packs they've changed on Vauxhall petrol engines. Yeah. <laughs> Normally very reliable, fuck off. Anyway, uh, most of the loose dirt connections uh, ought to try, blah, 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 that's all to do with disc modules. The practice of checking for a spark by holding the live end of a HT lead a short distance away from the engine is not recommended. Oh. It's, uh, but the disc module, uh, or maybe, oh, I don't have a disc module. I don't really want to be damaging the electronic control unit either. Extreme care should be taken if attempts are made to test the system, as it's very sensitive and if damaged may cost very costly to renew. Well, in this case, fucking impossible. Good luck finding an ECU for a 1999 car nowadays. And, and then it goes on. Uh, as your train test equipment is available, entrust testing and fault diagnosis to a Vauxhall slash Opel dealer. It's far better to pay the labour charge involved in having the vehicle checked by someone suitably qualified than to risk damage to the system or yourself. Uh, then it goes on. It has a self-diagnostic function. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't think the diagnostic function is really going to work if we can't get the fucking thing started. Plus, I don't have a code reader. Well, I do, but as with everything in my life, I don't know where it fucking is. If the engine won't turn over at all... Right, OK, well, it is turning over now. And... Testing of the LT and HT circuits, and then that's it. It doesn't tell me anything. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven whole paragraphs telling me not to do the thing that I was planning on doing. Okay, then. We're going to go look at some alternative sources, and by that I mean we're going to look online and see if we can get hold of any of this um, specialist test equipment. Um, I'm sure there is something, it just sort of flashes um, whenever there's a spark. Let's see if we can get hold of that, it's not too expensive. If it is too expensive, then we'll just go to the next one, which is checking the fuel system. Hopefully we don't have another fucking warning like this. Oh, Christ. Alright, more research. Alright, I'm going to do a little bit more of the course this afternoon. I know, Bella, we'll go outside in a minute. Now, you probably notice I'm here in the porch. The reason being is I thought I'd filmed this bit before going out in the wind. It's quite a windy day. Now, I was planning today on um, pulling out those spark plugs and um, testing, seeing if we're getting any decent spark. Getting one of those, um, those little bits of kits, you know, that flashes if there's spark going through to your spark plug. You basically just plug it in line. Unfortunately, I went to the local motor factors in Mildenhall. They didn't have either. I drove all the way over to your car parts. They didn't have either anyway. The soonest I could get one was actually off eBay, and it's going to be um, about five days to a week. 
which is really fucking annoying because I don't get many days off. Now, this is my only day off this week. I'm on a six day week and we can't really do anything. That was until I was driving home from Dunwich yesterday and I came across this. <laughs> now, although we were gonna go down the route of testing the spark, I'm still leaning towards this being fuel. We're just not getting the fuel to the engine. I don't quite know why, it's just that what's, that's what my gut tells me with it. You know, we had no fuel in it, or there may have just been sludge in it, so it's not getting through. And I was thinking about it. What, Bella? We'll go in a minute. And I was thinking about it. Um, we sprayed the WD-40 in the brake cleaner in it. They are both flammable. But we only sprayed a little bit, and they're not really meant for what we were trying to use them for. This is designed to do exactly that. And it says in the instructions, which I'm not going to read out, but for petrol engines, you spray it in for one to two seconds, then turn the engine over. I think I sprayed maybe half a second at the most with the other bits, and they're not made for it, so... Th that probably, probably was never going to work. So, yeah, we're going to do this. Now, I know there's a number of naysayers out there that say, oh, if you get this within six feet of any internal combustion engine, it will explode, and you will explode, and your dog will explode, and your wife will run off and shag the postman, and blah. It's like, A, no, 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 it won't. And B, no, it won't. Yeah, let, let's just give it a go. Let's just see. And uh, in theory... Using this, it will run for maybe a second or two seconds or give some indication that it's trying to start. And that will tell us that we are getting spark. It is capable of burning fuel. And we have a fueling issue. If we do this a few times and it still won't have it, then I suppose we do have to accept that we may have a spark issue. But, yeah, I want to give this a try now. I apologise for any wind noise. I'll try and shelter the camera as best I can. But... Yeah, as you can see, stuff blowing around next door's garden. It's a pretty breezy day. So let's go and give it a go. So while we're here, let's check the voltage on that nice shiny battery that I bought as well. Twelve point one. Considering all the cranking we were doing last time, that's, that's about right. All right. the fucking thing I'll go and start now. Ha, 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 ha. 
Success. Let's do that again. Right, that may not seem like much to some, but that is significant. We know the engine can run, and we know the fault lies in the fueling. See, this is how like old school diagnostics work. You know, you, none, none of this plugging it in, and it's only the fucking sensor that needs replacing. Now, process of elimination, we've done air, and by introducing a new type of fuel through the air, we know that the spark is working. So we then need to go to the back of the car and we'll start attacking the fuel system. Um, I'm going to start at the fuel pump end because why not? So yeah, I'm happy with that. Now I know it sounded somewhat unhealthy, a bit clattery. That's just because it's got really old engine oil and it hasn't run in such a long time. Once we get it running normally, that will probably clear up within a few seconds once it gets the oil pumped around the engine. and. Once it is running, one of the first things we're going to do is change the oil anyway. But for now, we just want to know that it that it will run, which it apparently will. I'm proper fucking happy now. <laughs> right, I need to get some kit together, and we're going to start attacking that fuel system. Okay, right. So there's two methods of approaching this now. There's one that I'm going to call the Ed China approach which is something I picked up when I was watching him. Uh, he's been restoring an old uh, Range Rover, 1980s Range Rover, for, well, better part of a year, as far as I can tell. Or there's the Rain Man Ray approach, uh, which is another YouTuber that I uh, follow. He's a uh, mechanic over in Florida, does some really interesting videos as well. Uh, now, we've kind of gone down the Rain Man approach using the Easy Start, um, because, well, he did that in order to diagnose a fuel pump um, on the car some time ago. What are you doing, Bella? Stop trying to climb the fence. Um, and yeah, that allowed him to, that basically showed him what showed here, that the vehicle was capable of running if it had something to run on, so it was obviously a fueling issue. He did a number of wiring checks and jazz, and you know, he has to be professional. Um, and such like, and yeah, eventually he diagnosed a fuel pump and all the bloody tank had to come off and everything. Um, now, in the case in uh, China's um, view, he took the um, he took the approach of pulling off a fuel pipe and seeing if fuel is even getting to the engine. Now, we could do that, except all of that lot is in there, and you just know that like, these bolts ain't coming out. So we're not going to do that for that reason, and the fact that it's probably not going to tell us. We now know that there's no fuel getting to the engine because it will run if you put fuel to it, but yeah. So what we're going to do instead, um, rather than start at the front, um, we may as well start at the back. And the reason behind it is, to my knowledge, there's not actually a right lot in here that can fail and stop it from running. You have things like fuel pressure regulators and there's an idle control valve, but it seems unlikely to me that they've gone. I'm thinking fuel pump at the back. Also, part of me is thinking, 
that fuel pump's a lot easier to get to than all the crap that's in here. So we may as well start there and hope that it's that because that will be a much easier repair. So what we're going to do, we're going to come around here. Open up the boot. Oh, spider. Now the fuel pump is under that carpet. I did try getting to it the other day and solving that depression there that you can see. The problem is, is you go in through the front and you've got to climb over the seat base. Or you're coming through the back and you've got to sort of straddle the back seats because if you put them down, they then block what you're trying to get to. I'm going to make life easy on myself and we're going to remove these seats. The question is, do we remove that bit or that bit? Mm. That is the question. Let's do some investigating and see which one's easiest to remove. Alright, so what is this held on with? Oh. That screw. <laughs> that entire seat base yep, is mm, held on with a single screw. I know, Bella. I know. Are you wanting to get in at something? Alright, so if we remove this seat base... I mean, it's a three door, so I've still got to scramble over all this, but, I mean, yeah, that'll move forward. Pardon the rubbish, whatever. All right, yeah, let's get this seat base out, because I can climb in here pretty easily now. Yeah, so you can see what I mean. All right, let's give that a try. Yeah, we'll get the base out. And then if we still can't get to the pump properly, then we can always take the back out. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so undid the screws, both ends, and this thing is no more or less secure than it was. I fucking hate working on cars sometimes. All right, spoke too soon. It turns out what you do, lift it up. Thank you, Bella. And then, oh... Yeah, the way animal. And then I was able to just you slot it down there and see better on that one. See what I mean? It was wedged in there and you basically brought it up and then down behind and the whole thing came out. Struggling to film this inside the car. I need a proper tripod that can like clamp in different places. More fucking money though, isn't it? All right, let's see if we can get this carpet out of the way and get proper access to this fuel pump. fuel pump. Now we're going to do a quick check. Now that we've got everything out of the way, I can do this properly. We're just going to turn the ignition on and see if we can hear anything from it. I don't know if you're going to hear anything because you're still outside the car. I haven't figured out a way of getting you in here yet. So. I didn't hear anything from the fuel pump then. There's no smells or anything. No. That little attempt I think was just a few bits of the easy start burning off. Right, here's what we're going to do. Going with the Rain Man Ray approach, sometimes they just get seized up. So, a couple of bashes with a rubber mallet sometimes freeze them off, so... done something. Come on, grab the camera and show you what's done. Ah, 
As you can see, fuel light's gone out. The gauge has moved up. It wasn't moving early until I whacked it with a hammer. That's positive. Done something at least. We know that there is fuel in there now. All right, let's try that again. This might be running today. Famous last words. <laughs> it's not gonna be running. <laughs> I'm not that fucking lucky. Right, okay, so had a bit of a break. Had a, had a poo and then a bite to eat. Too much information, I know, never mind. Uh, we're going to be doing this next bit on the, uh, well, doing a fair bit of it on the selfie stick, um, so I apologise if it gets a bit wobbly. Now, whilst I was having a break, I looked up the price of a new fuel pump. Uh, they range from between about £30 and £130. Now, the £30 one I could probably stretch to um, and just go for it, just put a new one in and try it. Unfortunately, that's not available anywhere. The only one that's available is the £130 one because reasons. So before we condemn something so expensive, um, well, actually, before we condemn, even if it was 30 quid, I want to do all these checks anyway. We're going to make sure we're just going to run down, check the fuses. There's a relay on the other side of the car as well. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're actually getting power to the pump. And yeah, if there's power getting to the pump and the pump's not doing anything, uh, then yeah, then that's it. That is your causal part. So we'll start off. It is this one. Which is number 26 and um, it is one two three from the right um, now in some pictures I saw online it was a 10 amp but in this one it's a 20 and the diagrams as well show it's a 20 so I'll pull that out one-handed let's have a look at it you see that is intact now before we put it in though we are gonna check see if we're getting voltage through there when we turn the ignition on so Hopefully you can see that. Now with the fuse out, this is actually the second time I'm doing this. I forgot to press record the first time. So we'll just put the uh, the little probes in the contacts for the fuse. Now when I turn the ignition on, in theory we will see a voltage. Nothing. nothing across there okay right let's go and check the relay then right. there was supposed to be some relays behind this panel why am I not surprised that there isn't fuck sake See if it's behind here then, shall we? It's not supposed to be behind here. It's supposed to be behind that kick panel that I just removed, but oh of course. Can't get the pissing screwdriver. Get off me, Bella. You're not helping. Fuck's sake. Different approach.
give me the fucking screw. Feel any relays under there? because they are there. Hmm. Ah, that's what I does. So I'm cocking around. There's a little cable here and <laughs> attached to the heater box. I wondered what it did. It's the recirculation flap. Huh. Right. After all that fucking around, I can't remember which one it is now. Nor can I figure out how much we're going to get in there to test it. Not sure if that's a design feature or a design flaw, but hmm. contacts all look good. one it is and let's test that. Right, look, you're not helping. Come on. Try to work here. Come on. Alright. Lie down there then. Good girl. Uh, here's what we're going to do. So we are going to someone very helpfully just suggested rather than taking it apart just feel if it's working I reckon it's the purple one so I'll put my hand on there mm. I can definitely feel that coming on
But like, it's, you're not helping. Yeah, I can feel that working. I feel the great one working as well to some extent. So I think the relay is working. For some reason, we're not getting voltage across that fuse, but that, given that nothing in this car is where it's supposed to be electronically, I know better. Uh, given that nothing in this car is where it's supposed to be, it may not even be the right fucking fuse. What is it, girl? Hmm? What is it? Do the people over the internet want to see your face, do they? Hmm? Yes. Yes, I know. Okay, right, let's put that back together. And we're going to check, see if we're getting voltage at the actual plug that goes into the fuel pump. Yeah, let's do that. Because if there's voltage there, then we know everything else is working and it's just the pump. So yeah, let's do that. Oh, all right, it's getting kind of late now. So, I haven't recorded much of it because it's mostly just been me swearing and not saying very much else. Um, and I've just sort of been climbing in and out of the car, poking at wires. Nothing very interesting. And you see, we've taken this out again. I double-checked it. The relay is still working. Checking the pins at the back. We're still getting a live feed from it as well. That seems to be working. We're still not getting any voltage at the fuse which is curious but we are getting hello Bella we are getting power at the plug I've plugged it back in now but yeah we were getting power there as well 10 volts exactly 10 volts every single time which is interesting now that may seem a little low we get 11 at the relay eh. I mean I haven't checked the battery voltage we've been fighting around this car for a long time um, I am going to... What on earth are you doing, Bella? Get out. Come on. I am going to... Go away, do a bit more research. See if there's any other tests I can do. Um, but I think what we're going to have to do is... Yeah, pull the fuel pump out. There it is. Pull the fuel pump out. And we're going to have to find a way to bench test it. Um, I'm not overly keen on bench testing it whilst it's in situ because try as I might I cannot for the life of me find a wiring diagram that tells me what those four wires do brown appears to be earth the others according to some online sources are all live although only one of them seems to be yeah beats me <laughs> And everyone else, everyone else online seems to have different colour wiring to me. So, it's been fun and games so far. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there for today. I'm going to go away, do some research and come back another day. Get that fuel pump out and let's get it bench tested. I'm still leaning towards that needing replacing. But, yeah, I want to run down my test before I start spending money on it. All right. Back in a, well, I'll be back in a good few days from my point of view. Back in about 10 seconds from your point of view. One positive. Uh, get it positive. It's really electrical. Uh, one positive to having a decent battery on it is I can now lock the car. Uh, central lock-in. Yeah. It's handy because I'm leaving a lot of crap at the back as well. Yeah, look at that. So, okay, right, it's now the uh, the following day. I thought I'd do a bit of an update. Now, I was planning on pulling out the fuel pump and um, bench testing it. Basically, just running 12 volts straight through it, seeing if we can get any life in it whatsoever. Um, I haven't done that yet, partly because when I take the fuel pump out, it then opens up the fuel tank, and, I'm, well, my precious petrol is going to start evaporating at that point, and it's then going to fill this car with petrol fumes until I get a new one to put in it. So I don't want to do that just yet. Um, 
I thought I'd just run through the electrics again because it's bothering me that this relay appears to be working, but we don't get any voltage at the fuse. Now, that may be normal. I haven't been able to find any information as to whether it's normal or not. The fuse is intact. And whilst loads of people call it, you know, the fuel pump fuse, the official designation from Vauxhall is fuel injection system fuse. So it's entirely possible that it's not supposed to receive any voltage until the vehicle's actually running. Why do you need the fuel injection system running until you start the car? So, yeah, I'm in two minds as to whether or not it's supposed to be doing that. Um, a lot of people say, no, bridge the fuel pump relay um, and see if you can get the pump to run. Well, okay, so that's what we've done. We've bridged it as we said we would. The ignition is on, as you can see over there. If we touch these two wires together, that then, yeah, that then completes the circuit and we should hear the pump running, which we do not. Now, again, that is indicative of the fuel pump being shagged. I'm going to try once to bridge it and crank it, see if that does anything. Feeling that, yeah, we're going to have to get a fuel pump for it. Right, here we go, and hopefully I don't blow myself up. Right, so we'll hold those together as we turn on the... Nothing. Still no noise from the pump, which is frustrating. Let's just check something here. Right. Probably do with three hands for this. Well, don't climb in the car. Oh, you're climbing in the car, aren't you? Bloody hell. It, it could not be making, getting more in the way. Right, sit. No, no, you don't have to sit on me. You are a really unhelpful animal. I'll put the fucking key. There it is. that down there. Hopefully that'll stay connected. I will hold this one with me hand. Interesting, we're only getting 0.2 of a volt across this. See if I turn this off. Uh, it doesn't immediately drop to zero, which is interesting.
dog. Alright, so we're only getting 0.2 volts with the relay bridged. Uh, I don't know if that's enough. Is that if that's meant to be powering the fuel pump? That's not enough. But interestingly, there's nothing there when it's um when it's turned on. Hmm, when it's turned off rather. Okay, let's try a different approach. Okay, so here's my line of thinking. Now, the relay. What noise was that, Bella? Bloody hell, animal. I don't think you were dying. Now, the relay is still unplugged. Interestingly, though, the fuel gauge still works. Now, if I go in the back over here and unplug that connector to the fuel pump, the fuel gauge stops working, as you would expect. Which says to me that they're on separate circuits, which is fine. What I want to know is, with that relay taken out, has that voltage that I was getting at the connector gone away? Because if it has, then that tells us that, yeah, that tells us that the circuit is good to the pump, it's getting power, it's not doing anything. If with that disconnected, that 10 volts that I was only getting out of one wire is obviously to do with the gauge and not the pump. Because there's, there's four wires. This one, number three, is the earth. This one, number four, is live. And the other two don't seem to do anything. So let's see how that's affected it. So the relay is still off. Come on, out you go. What the hell's wrong with it? There we go. Came off really easy, easily, aren't we? Now I don't know if you can see here. I'll zoom it in in the edit if I can. So yeah, there's four wires. The brown one here, wire number three from my point of view at least, is earth. Brown is earth. These other three are supposed to be designated live for various purposes. However, if I connect the multimeter to pin number three here, and then the positive to the other three, I only get a voltage on this one here, number one, which is the blue and red. Um, now, if I connect positive to here, I can connect to any of these other three and I get the exact same voltage reading. The problem is, is the wiring diagram tells me nothing. I go online at people who've done stuff like this before. All the results I get are people who put in the C20 engines in, the two litres, which have different colour wiring. People are saying, oh, well, you know, that one goes to the relay. Well, I'm sorry, but... There's four wires going into the back of the relay, and none of them are those colours. They don't even have the fucking brown one. Which is really fucking annoying. So anyway, the plan is... Give me a multimeter. So, in theory, with that relay unplugged, we should get zero voltage to this, whichever way I play around with it. So... like that and then that so it's reading zero at the moment I'll try and put that so you can see it like that right ignition on so exactly the same 10 volts on 9.99 Let's try the others. Yeah. Yeah, exactly the same. The results are unchanged. Pulling that relay out. So I have to conclude therefore. 
fuel gauge isn't working now because this is unplugged. I wonder. Let's just try that one in there, that one in there. We get zero reading. Again, fuel gauge is unchanged. So having that relay plugged in or not plugged in seems to make fuck all difference to this. And we've made no progress whatsoever. Let's plug that back in. Right, let's have a think, try something else. Come back around to this fuse here and testing there zero volts which is what you'd expect it's turned off now, so let's just try a crank with this one ha result so that's doing what I thought it would do. I've plugged the relay back in, and when you turn it on, you get voltage coming through here. Don't we, Bella? Yes. Yes, we do. Right, so that circuit is working. We can plug that back in. Uh, well, actually, I'll tell you what we'll do first. We'll unplug that relay again and see what difference that makes. Right, relay out, voltmeter on, I keep calling it a voltmeter, well it is because that's about the only setting I ever use. Right. So relay out, zero charge, turn it on, nothing, let's try again. Exactly the same. That appears to be the most pointless relay ever. It seems to make no difference whether it's there or not. But then again, that may just be confirming my suspicion that this isn't the fuel pump fuse, but the fuel injection system fuse. Right. I need to go make a cup of tea and have a think about where we go from here. Right, welcome back. It has been another week ish six seven days since we last touched this and i've been doing a bit of thinking about it and all the fighting around that we've done yeah we're getting to the point where we could keep testing and keep fighting around with it but we're just avoiding the issue we need to get the fuel pump out and we need to do a proper bench test on it um so that's what's going to happen today come hell or high water that fuel pump is coming out and it is getting tested and if we have to order a new one then so be it. So, we've started off. The battery is disconnected for safety reasons. We're going to be fighting around opening up the fuel system, fuel vapors. Last thing we want is a spark of even a small spark will, well, will die. And it's on charge at the moment, not because there's anything wrong with it, but because with all the fighting around that we've been doing over the past few weeks, it's uh, it's a bit flat. We're down to 11 and a half volts, which. It's okay. If the car was in perfect working order, it would probably still start at that. But, you know, I want to keep this battery tip-top. Because, well, we can't afford to keep throwing batteries at this thing. They ain't cheap. So, we're going to climb in the back. And clear all the crap out of the way. Um, yeah, this is probably going to be loud. There's going to be a lot of banging and thumping trying to get this fucking thing out. But, yeah, it's coming out one way or another right now. Fucking thing out. What's it, Bella? What am I doing? Yes. Uh, right. We'll go in from that side. So we are going to be using. Where's it going? We'll use. Yeah, we'll use those. Cock it. some of that as well to try and loosen it off there's a part that's been on here for 
well, 23 years. It's probably never been removed, so yeah, let's do that. What have you done, Bella? Stop getting yourself tangled. Where this goes now. Now that I look closely, there is actually evidence this has been out before, which is actually handy because it tells me which way I need to hammer this. Essentially, what you've got, there is a special tool for this from Vauxhall, but I mean, whether or not you can actually get it still or how much it's going to cost, I don't know. But it also says in the manual that you can just use a fucking hammer and chisel or a screwdriver. You've essentially got to get this ring here to rotate and then the whole thing will lift out. And yeah, there's evidence just here and here of someone's already been hammering away at it to get it out. So this may not be the original fuel pump in this vehicle. But there we go. Uh, right, so we'll start and get that off. first before we undo the hoses. Anything we can do to avoid unnecessary fuel vapour. Oh, that's a lot of dust. But it's moving. Before anyone says anything, yes I have taken adequate fire safety precautions, if something goes wrong I'm going to fucking leg it that way and take the dog with me. There's about 12 miles of farmland that way, that should be enough to get away. The house will burn down but yeah. Get in there with it. It's a 7R on it, that could be important. seized on. I'm just going to double check the manual, make sure I am doing this the right way around. Yep, definitely anti-clockwise, which from my point of view is that way. Which makes sense, righty tighty, lefty loosey. But you just get that feeling, you're like, am I doing this right? Let's just keep going. Maybe I need to just hit it harder. Yes, I do, I just need to hit it harder. There we go. What is that? That's the, uh, the locking. Loose. 
tools. Um, we're probably going to need to undo these. Hold it, brother. Just opened the passenger door as well. Now that this is unsealed, I mean, obviously this isn't smell of vision, so you can't tell, but it really smells of fuel in here now. Nice fresh fuel, but fuel. some skin off my knuckles. Oh, big fucking lump of it. Right. So that's all done. Droplets of fuel, nothing major. This, of course, the pump isn't pumping. Oh, it stinks now. That is the fuel tank. something just falling down into said tank. What was that? That was one of the fucking fuel clips. Shit. Take the other one off for safekeeping. Let's see if we can retrieve that later. I've got a magnet on a stick. seen better days but never mind that is our fuel pump right there in the middle how does one get it out I have a feeling it has something to do with these clips yes Oh, there's a 
another clip. That's it, fella. Out you go. This clip as well. Off you go. There we go. Oh, a bit of fuel there, so never mind. There it is. Our fuel pump. and windows open we need to go and bench test this but we're gonna do it well away from all this shit because i do not want fucking sparks Ugh. all right bella right. so we're gonna do this oh. on uh, this is like the patio out the front of the house we're outdoors and we've got a nice stone surface to do this on. Is that still in shot? Yeah, we yeah, a nice stone surface to do this on. So if it does go awry, nothing's going to catch fire. I can just stand up and walk away from it. So we've got here this little, well, I call it a testing kit. It's basically bit of speaker wire with some connectors on the end although we've lost one of the connectors and what we're just going to do is stick this on there like that we're using the old battery um, I haven't thrown it away yet I haven't had a chance to get to the scrapyard it's only got like 10 volts in it but it should be enough to make this do something and it doesn't say on it what it's it's rated for 12 volts but I mean I don't still expect a response from it. So we stay on there. Yeah, and we're just gonna touch these onto here. So that one, that one. Nothing. They are definitely touching. Interesting. And we're getting two volts to the actual pump. That could just be resistance inside it. Let's should be making noise. in as well. 
Giggity. Oh, buddy, I've got lots full in the car on me now. No real resistance. Let's check something else. It's just not this wire. Now that is interesting, just this testing has run that battery down by another volt. Now it is fucked, it needs to go in the bin, but I still wouldn't expect that from it. Alright, we're going to do one more thing, because these ain't exactly cheap. We're going to try one more thing and we're going to get the, the good battery out of the car. Uh, once it's charged and plug that up to it and if it's if we still can't get we should hear noises it should start doing stuff we're just putting pure power straight into it if that still doesn't work then it's fucked we need a new one i'm also just going to go and give it a bit of a bash with the hammer see if that uh, helps loosen it off uh, right well i mean that's productive and a bit of a cock up it's a cock up because i forgot to press fucking record and i've got to put the battery back in the car now but yeah i hold the good battery out put it on the side it's back up to 12 and a half volts already and there's life in it now it's not running but what it did is it would sort of jerk and if i held it in my hand i could feel it it's trying to move but it won't spin and also the white hello bella i know you, you don't want this. No, it stinks. 
and it seemed to be drawing a lot of current because as I'm touching the wires onto the battery, it's arcing out. And the little bit of wiring that I was, was getting warm, um, yeah, at one point the connector actually stuck to the battery terminal. I had to pull it off. There's, oh, I'll, I'll come down and I'll show you. I'll put it back in the car now. If you look on the negative, the little dots right on the top, they weren't there. So, yeah, there's life in the girl. I think it's safe to say it is seized up. But we may be able to unseize it because it's trying to go. You know when you hold on to something and it's trying to move, you can feel it. That's what it was doing. So let's just go and um, give it some persuasion. Okay, so this may or may not be the best thing to do to a fuel pump, but at this stage it's pretty screwed anyway, so... I'm going to sell some penetrating spray, WD-40. Get that in these holes. Oops. And in that one. Let's search through. What, Bella? What is wrong with you today? See if we can get any in this top bit as well. Okay, and we're just gonna There's no, there's no way of getting hold of um, like a, a shaft so I can see if it's spinning freely. The only thing we can do is this and then retest. Where's the dog gone? Yeah. Right, tell me, we'll let all the WD-40 dry because that's flammable on its own and it's soaked in it now. Um, I doesn't say it's flammable. Oh no. Danger contents are flammable. Right. Yeah, we'll let that soak for a bit. What we'll do is we'll go and reseal up the uh, fuel system because it fucking stinks out here at the moment. Right, so we're just going to tuck all this lot away. Rubber seal back in place. And there's now loose wires inside my fuel tank as well, which, as you can imagine, is not ideal. In seals come off.
across with this fucking seal. It just does not want to go in place. This is our sender unit. I've just noticed as we're putting this back together, the wiring on it, the insulation is all hardened and cracked. Now obviously we've disturbed it and that's all come off so we now just have two bare wires that are going to short out and cause a spark in my fuel tank. So let's get that disconnected. Pissy little clips on, which do nothing but make it impossible to work on. I feel cold. The insulation to the uh, the wiring to the pump is okay still. So. We have to find a way to rewire that later. That will be some fine soldering, which is always fun. Bella! Fucking hell! some reason or another, it's now choosing to sit proud and won't go back in. Something with this fucking seal.
is one of the really annoying things about working on cats. So this has come out, and I'm putting it back exactly the same way, but it's sitting proud here. It just will not go in. There's no reason to rhyme to it. It just doesn't want to fucking cooperate, apparently. Bella! Bella, here! What the fuck is wrong with you? Hmm? What the fuck is wrong with you? Hmm? Because it won't sit flat, I can't get this locking round back in to seal it properly. Right, it's back in. I left the camera off because I was just getting really annoyed and sweary. But yeah, you've basically got to put this down on a rubber seal. And that rubber seal's obviously not quite thick, so you want a good seal, but it makes it a fucking pain in the ass to get it back in. In the end, I just ended up hammering that retaining ring into place, and then it all just seemed to slot in. And then it went in really easily. All I needed to do was hammer the fuck out of it. I'll remember that for next time. We're leaving the plug disconnected because there's loose wires and such like in there. And for my own sanity, we're going to pull the battery completely out of the 
out of the car, out of the engine bay. So there's absolutely no chance of any electrical power getting through this car. So we're going to go and play around the fuel pump, see if we can't get any life into that. And we also need to look at what we can do with this sender unit because the wires affect on it. Um, yeah, I'm thinking if it's cheap, I'm just going to order a new sender unit, the gauge. Um, yeah, sender unit for the fuel gauge. If not, then it looks fairly simple to solder. It's just whether or not I can be asked to do such fine work with it. Uh, so let's go have a fuck with the fuel pump. I think we'll give it one last chance to start spinning. Beyond that, we're getting a new one. Right, I have a feeling today is going to be the day we have got a new fuel pump. I've checked the part numbers, they match, and it looks more or less exactly the same as the old one. Excellent. And we've managed to put some new insulation on the wiring to the fuel level sensor thing. Now, I did search high and low for this part. You can't get them. You just can't. They are not available anywhere. I can get very similar ones, but yeah, the, you just can't get them. So I've had to re-insulate that wire. Um, yeah, we had a blue and a brown. I didn't have any brown, so I used black. Whatever. As long as it works, I'm not that fussed. I'm never going to see it again with a bit of luck. So I may be being a bit over-optimistic, but yeah, we're going to do a quick bench test of the new pump. And then we're going to put it in the tank. And it's going to work. It's going to fucking work. This car's going to run today. open back up shall we I've forgotten I need to do I need to find my magnet on the stick to retrieve that hose clamp I'm 
this in first. Sender reconnected, not the sender, the fuel level doobie doo. The uh, thing, cut the sensor back in. But what I didn't do was make sure the was on the right side of this seal. So now I'm trying to woman do it, and it won't fucking come out. Get a proper grip on this. on the correct side of the seal. There we go. What's wrong with the dog? Bella! What's all this fuss, eh?
something I'll need to close this clamp. Thank you. Oh, that's a nice touch, that saved me a headache. I was trying to remember which way around the wires went. So, um, so normally, brown is live um, on the voxels, but of course I've got red and fucking blue. Yeah? Um, but fortunately the two little speed connectors are a different size, so <laughs> that solved that problem. Oh, fuck hell, my neck is killing me. Oh, for fuck's sake, Stuart.
trying to get that goes on top of that. in. Fuel pump is in. It's still connected nicely. Alright. I'm just going to try and get the whole lot back in. This was a huge pain in the ass last time. It took me like an hour to get it in with this seal in place. The seal either kept it moving and dropping down into the tank. locking ring in place and it forced in. I just do the same without me getting annoyed. Yeah. Since it sits neatly there, you can press it down hard enough. Signs where we do not go down.
up and do you in. I just want to make sure this ring is in properly. Right, I think that's as in as it's gonna get. It's certainly not fucking going anywhere ever again. Right. Let's get this back on. First things first. I think I'm going to get myself another one of these clamps. Yeah.
Right, here we are, back from the shops. Got me clamps. Let's get this part on the shall we? Only go. These clips fucking hate them. special tool or something for doing these but I don't have it so weird the recording just stopped on its own I didn't know it do that before could have I heard it or you might have missed something go on oh fucking thing This is actually getting further open than it is. And the more I try and close it off. it again. Camera keeps cutting out. It's not overheating. I don't know what it's doing. You know what? I'm losing my rack with it. We'll come back to that. Put this other one on. Now, before anyone loses their fucking mind about the, this set of clamps that I've got, I'm well aware they are the wrong type of clamp. It's all they had. I'm going to put it on. It'll do for now. And we'll come back to it later. Right, I'm going to order the correct clamp. But this is all they had at the shop and I needed one straight away. So we've got these adjustable hose clamps, which if I'm honest, will probably do the job just as well, but whatever, right.
camera's keeping going at least. You know what, I'm going to cheat and just put it on both. I'm going to have to take all this apart later anyway, so I may as well. May as well save myself some time now and when the new, the proper clamp comes, I'll uh, put them both on at the same time. I doubt I'm going to be able to order just one, so I'll have to order a set, so I may as well change both while I'm at it. These won't do for the purposes of how I'm testing. Get them back together, that is. Again, what's up with the camera today then? They're not fucking going anywhere, that's for sure. Look! Fucking hell, that's a big bastard. Where's it going? That was a queen wasp. Oh, it's back. Where is it? Right, it's gone. Yeah. Unfortunately, something we have to deal with out here at this time of year. It's strange, every year that I've lived out here, every autumn, it 
it's um, yeah middle of October now and it's very much autumn um, yeah we get wasps looking to hibernate the queen wasps I mean you know they, they have to hibernate somewhere it's what they do but yeah they seem to love to try and get in your house you know I've found no end of them hibernating inside the house I've had to take them out um, so yeah you will very rarely see a queen wasp actually flying around, except this time of year, and I get fucking loads of them. So, I had two in the house just yesterday. So, and you can tell they're queens because they're fucking massive bastards. Ah, that's plugged in. That have been said, though, they must come here, hibernate, and then go off somewhere else to make their nest. Because I've only once ever actually had a wasp's nest on my property in the garden that I had to deal with. Um, you'd have thought with the amount of queen wasps that I'm getting here, I'd have no end of wasps nests, but I do not. Oh. Thinking about it, my granddad's house had the same. Every single winter he had to go up and clear all the queen wasps out of his loft because they would hibernate up there. And he'd have dozens of the fuckers up there. Um, but he only ever once had an actual wasp's nest in the house. It was the weirdest thing. Right, we're in. That's connected. We need to reconnect the battery. And then we're going to be good to go. This is exciting. Let's pack me tools up. I forgot to film bench testing the fuel pump. Needs to say it works. <laughs> I wouldn't have put it in the car. We have this on charge for a good 24 hours as well. 12.9 volts, good. Right, let's get me spanners, let's get this reconnected. This one. We'll be quick with this, go straight on with it to avoid sparks and other unpleasantness. And there you go. Because if you hesitate and you touch it and such like, one it can cause issues with your electrical systems, especially modern ones, they, they don't like it. Also you get sparks and noises and it's a bit unpleasant and if you're not used to it, it can be a bit scary. So yeah, just go straight on. Alright. Moment of truth. Alright, here we go.
Jetzen! Even the charging system works. <laughs> Right, well there you have it. So, shut the door. So to answer the question that I asked so many weeks ago from my point of view, and oh, I've, I must have about six hours worth of footage to go through from this now. Will it run? Yes, it will. Let's do it again. Look at that. Not only will it run, it starts on the button. That's fucking awesome. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I love it. Now, for some reason, well, I think I know the reason, the fuel gauge has stopped working. It's now reading stone dead empty. I think I know what's happened there. The... The little lever that moves up and down felt a bit stiff. I think it's just not moving up. It's not floating. When I put it in, the the little float on it was stayed below the... Uh, well, it's not the water line. The stayed submerged. It should float on the top, like the um, doobie-doo that's in your toilet. Um, yeah, clearly been out of the tank and on my desk for um, a week has um, done something to it. Um, and it's gone stiff and it's now not moving. I don't think there's anything wrong with the wiring. The wiring was fine. Um, yeah, I think it's it's just a bit stuck. I'm not overly concerned about that at the moment, though. The car works, which I'm properly happy with. Um, yeah, we can come back to that. It may start working again on its own. You know, it's back in its usual habitat. Um, so, yeah. So I forgot what I was saying there. Yeah, it's back in its usual habitat. You know, it's exposed to fuel, so it, you know, it, that will will have some lubricating effect on it. It may start working. If not, then we can always take it back out again and um, and have a proper look at it. But for now, I know that there's good fuel in there because it works. <laughs> right. So that finally, 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 finally concludes this video. Well, this part two. Or by the time I've done the edit, it might be part three or four or twelve. I don't know. I've got a fucking no end of vid um, editing I have to go and do now. Cut out all the boring shite. We can finally move on to other things with this now. I think given the noise that engine was making when we started it up, it's going to be prudent to start with an oil change. Seems like a good idea. We know the battery's good. There's other things we could do with it later, like spark plugs and you know, air filters and such like, but they're not necessary right now. But I think an oil change is prudent. And then we need to start working on everything else it needs to get it back up to scratch. I know at least 
the handbrake on one side is seized on so that needs taking apart that's going to be a bitch of a job i just know it because it is seized on hard like harder than a handbrake should be on um i need to put stuff back together inside here the radio well actually i don't know if the radio works or not it was barely working the last time i tried it but that was on the old battery Press volume, no, cancel demo. Yes, cancel demo. Right. I don't think the tuner ever worked on this because I didn't have the aerial connected. All right, let's try another approach. USB, there's nothing plugged in. CD, is there a CD in here? It's reading. What's it going to play? What was I listening to all those years ago? I've no fucking idea what this is. It's only coming out of the tweeters, the little speakers at the top. Nothing's coming out of the bottom. Is this Billy Joel? Neil Diamond, sorry. Whatever. Turn that off. Put a good and got myself a copyright strike now. Fucking hell. All right, I'm going to do it one more time. And then I'm going to go in and celebrate with a... Well, it's the middle of the day, so I'll celebrate with a coffee. I'll have a beer later. Do it one more time. <laughs> On the button! <laughs> right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you when I'm next working on this.